All right, we now need to talk about a really important theorem that we can use to determine whether a function converges or diverges. Importantly with this statement, we have no mechanism with this to actually give us out a value, but this will tell us whether it's worth the effort or whether we can prove that there must be an area value exists even if we don't know how to calculate it currently. In this case, the setup it's this graphical setup right here, but f and g are two functions that are continuous, and importantly is that f is greater than g of x for all x values for some determined a, and you'll see how we're going to use a in these improper integral statements, but also extremely important is this right here, is that this is often, this is a lot like the squeeze theorem, if you remember from early differential calculus. In this case, g is being squeezed as we go to infinity after a here. It's being squeezed in between this f function and zero. And the important statement is that we, that g can't just be less, less than f. It also has to be greater than zero. It can't dip down below here. And that's important when we're trying to find these areas. If g was less than f and then just took off, it still would be divergent or convergent. We couldn't make any statement. But what we're going to make is the two following statements, is that if f converges, so if we look at the integral from a to infinity, and f is converging on that integral, then it must make sense, and it must be true, that g from a to infinity also converges, because g is sandwiched between 0 and the function f of x. That's an important statement. The second statement to make is, is if g of x diverges, so if this area right here is non-calculable, this func this in uh, improper integral, excuse me, diverges, then it means the improper integral for f of x on the same domain from a to infinity must also diverge. And so again, here's that statement right there. So if f of x on, from the, on the interval from a to infinity, if that converges, if we're able to calculate that area, or if we know we could calculate the area and that it does converge, then that means by, by proxy that g of x that integral from a to infinity must also converge. It also follows, by the way, and it is part of the thinking process for this proof, is that this integral, because g of x is strictly, well, if it is less than f of x, then we know that the value of this that it converges to would be less than this value right here. Again, this holds true even if they're equal. So if they're equal forever, well, it's pretty dumb because then f of x and g of x are the same and you wouldn't be asking that question. So I'm gonna stick to my guns here. This integral, given something interesting, this integral would be less than this, um, but they both converge is the important statement in this case. And so then that second statement again is, if we know that that lesser function, in this case, g of x, if we know we can't calculate that area from a to infinity, or in other words, it diverges, then that must mean the larger function must also diverge. Okay, in this example, we're going to use this comparison test. In this case, we're being asked to prove that this is convergent. And as you'll see, and you've seen something like this before, this e to the negative x squared actually does not have an algebraic antiderivative. So we don't have mechanisms that we can use to actually calculate this, but we can use a proxy function. In other words, a function that converges but is bigger than this. If we have a bigger function, our f of x in this case, we're going to use this as g of x. If we can find an f of x function that converges and is greater than this, then we can prove that, well, even though we can't mechanically actually find its value, we can prove that that the area between under the curve of e to the negative x squared from one to infinity, it does exist if we can find a technique to actually calculate it. In fact, whether or not we can use it, find a technique to calculate it, we know that it is convergent. So here's how this goes. What I want to do is do a proof of this. I'm going to use the comparison theorem. First of all, I need to define this function right here. So, so first and foremost, so on this interval we're looking, so on from one to infinity, and it's it can be important for these statements that you're considering the interval over which you're integrating, but it should be clear is that x is less than or equal to x squared. That's actually not always true. For, for x values between negative one and one, this statement doesn't hold true, but from one and positive or one and bigger, this is a true statement. And then since that statement is true, the following must also be true 
that e to the x is less than or equal to e to the x squared. And again, that should be pretty straightforward. If I have the same base and I plug in a larger exponent, and I've shown this larger or equal, then this must be larger than this right here. And then the important thing is through all of that, so one over e to the x, what I wanna do is compare these two, e to the x squared right here. And if you're thinking about this, again, this is important, is that this denominator is bigger than this. So just thinking like an example, a nice concrete example, think of one tenth versus one half. See the two being less than the 10. If my denominator is larger, which I've shown that it is in this case, it means that this expression is actually smaller. So this statement is also true. Then with that, what we're going to do is use the fact that actually in a previous example, we played around with this. We know that the improper integral from one to infinity of one over e to the x dx is convergent. Importantly at this point, if you don't know what I'm talking about there, in the first video for improper integrals that we did, we played around with this one over e to the x function and found that as we went to infinity, it did converge. So we have this bounding function, this upper function of f of x, in this case, that's one over e to the x. We know it's strictly bigger than this on this interval. These are both continuous on from one to infinity. And so therefore, We know by our two statements above, by one and two up there, and our friend here, the comparison theorem, we know that the integral in question from one to infinity of one over e to the x squared, and it is e to the negative x squared, but we know it's exactly the same, but we know now that must be conversion. As stated in the previous videos, what uh, is really useful for the comparison theorem, besides other examples that you have seen and can play with, is the, those, those ra simple rational functions, right, of the form of one over x to the p. Often what you'll do is use functions like that because we have those values that when p is less than or equal to one, we know that it diverges. When p is greater than one, it converges. So we can often take a function and compare it to one of those. If we can trap it on, under one of those for all x values bigger than our given a right here, whatever that a is to infinity, we then can show that it's convergent. And also to state, I stated this, this previously, all we've done here is state that this has a finite value. It is convergent but we haven't done any of the work to actually calculate that. There are methods to do that. We're not gonna cover that at this point. All we're doing is saying, heck yeah, we know that that area under the curve from one to infinity, it does have a finite value, but we haven't done anything else than that because this is a really awkward function and doesn't have a nice antiderivative, not with any of our methods that we know of. And just to clarify that point, it's none of the methods that we know of yet. There are methods to get really good approximations. We can use different things like functions that represent this to find this area, but, but we don't need to worry about that at all right now. Again, we're just making the clarification as is it convergent or divergent? And last to say, what this gives us is another method to answer questions that is this convergent. Previously in the examples that we had, we were being asked, hey, is this convergent? And what we would have to do is we go, well, heck, I'm going to try to figure out if we can find a value. If I can find a finite value, then it's convergent. In this case, we don't have to just go with that kind of mechanically brute force method. We can actually use some analytical reasoning with the comparison theorem. And also to say, if you're looking at a pretty nasty function like this, you can kind of see this relationship right here. That's really hard to play with. This is easy to play with as far as integrals go. So when you're looking at these, making, be thinking about that, right? Like, man, this kind of sucks. It's got this weird chain rule type uh, composition of functions. Is there a function that doesn't have this awkward composition, but then I can play with, and then I can defend whether it, it's greater than that other function or less than, right? So importantly here, if I got the feeling this was divergent, 
I've been looking for a function that's less than this function, and that function diverges, then using this method right here, I could prove that the other function was divergent. So just remember those two methods. There's a lot of different ways of playing with this. Um, and again, just another way to prove whether something converges or not.